A spaceship carrying humans to Mars gets stuck in space for six million years. In the near future, as the world becomes more polluted, people travel to Mars through Aniara. This spacecraft showcases everything that resembles earthly life. The movie introduces us to our female protagonist, Mimarabin, who works in the Maima department of Aniara. This department offers people a glimpse of the green and beautiful life on Earth through virtual reality, making them feel closer than ever to their home planet. On one of the days during a voyage to Mars, Mimarobin leaves her passenger seat and ventures out to explore Aniara. She steps into an elevator and nods affirmingly at a woman she encounters. Subsequently, Mimarobin heads to the Mima department, activates the technology, and immerses herself in Earth's floral beauty. She even plucks a leaf and consumes it, seeking a connection with nature. The narrative then transitions to a female astronomer elaborating on Aniara's amenities. These include restaurants, spas, showers, and more. Interestingly, this same woman shares a bunk bed with Mimarobin. As the official journey commences, passengers gather at Mima, where Mima Robin assists them in witnessing Earth. She instructs a woman named Chebeba to lower her head and then probe into her visual experience. Mima, it turns out, taps into their memory banks, ensuring that each person's encounter remains deeply personal. Abruptly, Aniara shudders and passengers tumble to the ground. The pilots grasp that the ship has veered off course, prompting them to release some fuel to prevent overheating. However, Isigil, one of the pilots, asserts that they've lost their bearings and reversing their trajectory is a formidable challenge. Shortly after that, Captain Chiffon urgently summons everyone for an announcement. The main hall fills with people, and he reveals that they had to drain the fuel tank due to a malfunction to save lives. The grim truth emerges. Aniara is no longer under their control, and reaching Mars may take up to two years. The news sends shockwaves through the passengers, and tears stream down their faces. Amidst the turmoil, Libidel, a woman who had promised to be present for her son's fourth birthday, succumbs to a panic attack. Mimarobin swiftly guides her to Mima, seeking solace and calm. On the other hand, the captain holds a meeting with the higher-ups of Aniara to check how long they can survive on the given resources. The scene then shifts to Mimarobin shifting in her bed while the astronomer asks her how she is doing. She reveals that since she has no family, she has no issue with how long she is stuck there. Meanwhile, the astronomer tells her she got separated after 31 years of marriage. Three weeks pass without a map, and people flock to Mima more than ever. After her regular shift, Mimarobin takes a stroll and spots the captain. She approaches a guard, requesting to meet the captain, but the guard dismisses her. Undeterred, she explains that her customer count has surged lately, surpassing any previous trips, and she needs assistance. However, the pilot casually brushes her off. Undistracted, Mimarobin heads for a swim, where Isigil joins her. Later that night, as she settles into bed, she turns to the astronomer and inquires about the celestial body they will encounter. The astronomer tells her there is no such body. The only one in existence is GM-54, but reaching its mass is impossible, hence they are stuck in space. The astronomer then asks Mimarobin to turn off the lights as she drifts off to sleep. In the middle of the night, Mima Robin starts to panic over her newfound discovery and leaves the room. She rushes to Mima, falls to the ground, and visits the earth for an escape. There, she walks barefoot in a forest and starts to ease herself. The next morning, the hospital room gets chaotic as a man has a panic attack. She asks him to go to the Mima, but he declines her offer, saying that she is a magician. He claims that she doesn't know anything, as he has heard Mima Robin say they are stuck there forever. He gets angry at her, and while dismissing her, he accidentally hits her. The team drags him to Mima and puts him on the ground to calm him down. She then meets with the captain, who acknowledges her efforts and says he will give her a team of eight. Moreover, he says that once people get used to eating algae, they will tell them the truth about being stuck in space. Three years pass, and the algae system on the Aniara starts to malfunction, causing problems with the filtration systems on board. People start to go to Mima and clubs to cope with their lives. At one such event, Mima Robin meets a guy in the club, and they make out. Isigil sees her making out, and Mimarobin moves away from the boy. This indicates that she has feelings for Isigil. However, as Isigil leaves, desperation takes over Mimarobin, and she gets intimate with the boy. Afterward, she returns to the lobby and takes a sip of her coffee, only to get a sulfate taste. The whole of Aniara's water gets polluted, and the captain appoints new people to work at the water filtration plant. 
Later on, as Mimirobin finishes her duty, she gives special place time to Isigil so that she can comfortably feel the earth. Once Isigil is done, Mimirobin tells her that the makeout session she saw her having meant nothing, and Isigil leaves without saying anything. The next day at work, one man starts to shake as people come in and lie down. Mimirobin takes him out after checking that he has been seeing horrible things happening. She tells everyone to leave because after that man, everyone starts to see terrific things. People lodge a complaint against her that she kicked them out of the Mima Hall, and Captain Chiffon reprimands her. She tells him the situation is that the Mima is weakening, and the positivity is slipping away from it, so it is better to shut it down for a while. The captain doesn't agree, and Mimirobin has to continue using Mima, which causes Mima to self-destruct as she can't handle it. Mimirobin and everyone related start to cry. They put notes outside the hall, and some people complain that Mimirobin used to stay inside the whole night, which is why the Mima gave up. As Mima Robin rests in her bed, the astronomer tells her about the complaints and says the captain might punish her. On the other hand, Isigil goes to the captain to tell him Mimarobin did nothing. The captain disrespects Isigil and Isigil pushes him away. Simultaneously, Mimarobin leaves her room and starts to run away. However, the guards soon catch her and beat her up. The fourth year starts and they name it Cult. Isigil, who has been fired from her job, is sent back to logistics, while Mimirobin gets a job teaching the students about tensor theory. The duo rejoices in happiness and goes to Isigil's room. They hug each other and then take a shower together. After this, they go to their respective jobs together. Then they go for a swim, and Chebeba tells them Libidel wants them to join her cult, where she will go to Mima's grave and pay tribute to them. Year 5 begins, which is labeled as Calculations. Isabel gets pregnant and stresses over giving birth. She tells Mima Robin that she will be giving birth to a prisoner, and it won't be a good world for the baby. She says there are no chances of them getting out of this place, which makes her cry. Mima Robin leaves her alone and goes to her old room. The astronomer seems to be drunk there. Mima Robin changes into a new dress and goes to the captain. She requests that they make a replica of Mima. She wants to create windows that can represent daylight. However, the captain insults her, saying she should focus on her job and not this. A while later, Isigil goes into labor, and with the help of a doctor and Mimero Ben, she gives birth to a baby. The couple bonds over the baby, but Isigil acts suspiciously. As Mimero Ben leaves to teach, Isigil takes their baby to swim and drowns him. However, a man comes to call her and the baby survives, fortunately. Chabiba takes the baby to Mimero Ben and tells her Isigil has been called to the base as a rescue ship has been found, she rushes to Isigel and finds out that a probe has arrived that might have enough fuel to turn around their ship so that they can return home, and it will arrive in 14 months. Captain Chiffon announces the good news to everyone, and they all rejoice in happiness. Year 6 starts, which is named The Spear. Students start to practice sending spears to the probe and get scolded by their seniors after having multiple failed attempts. Subsequently, Mima Robin and Isigil's baby also grows up. The time comes and everyone is made to lie on the floor due to the gravitational pull. The students successfully catch the probe and it is brought to Aniara. The issue is that the probe remains a mystery as they are unable to detect what lies inside it. A young student scientist suggests that the system should be upgraded while their seniors question whether it is even useful or not. However, the captain says that we should continue our research and not give up since it might affect the mental state of passengers. Isigil and Mimirobin continue to stay happy with their child and play with him in a room painted with all sorts of beautiful nature. The duo then goes to the bar and finds the astronomer drunk. She claims that the probe serves no purpose and they are stuck in space. Back at the research station, they remain unable to find anything that can help with the probe. Astronomers speak against religion and things heat up there. People start to demand answers regarding the probe and the control forces use violence to stop them. Later, Captain Chiffon comes to the research station. He motivates the workers and tells them that he will not tell people that they have not found anything useful. He emphasizes the passenger's mental state and says he will tell them everything is going as planned. He orders everyone to follow him as well. However, the astronomer uses a harsh tone with him and he shoots the astronomer dead angrily. They then hold a funeral for her, where Mimirobin reads her eulogy, and then they discard her body to space. Afterward, Mima Robin gets high and goes to dance with the boy she had once made out with. She kisses him and gets playful while a storm hits the ship. After a strong shake, the storm subsides, but deaths happen inside the ship, including Libidel. 
Mimorobin gains consciousness and runs to her room to find Isigal and the baby fine. After a while, the captain permits Mimorobin to create her images that would help present-day time to the ship. She starts working on it day and night while Isigal starts to lose hope. After the continuous efforts of Mimorobin, she finally creates a 3D image of greenery and rushes to Isigal to give her the good news. However, upon opening the door, she finds out that Isigal has killed herself and their son. She breaks down and all her hopes die that day. The ship continues to stay in space, and the most depressive party of time is held there. After this, the captain gives Mimorobin a medal for the 3D images she creates. However, it doesn't change anything. 24 years later, the ship is almost dead, with only a few people inside that too, following cults and practices. The movie ends with Anyara finally finding a celestial body to turn to, a planet resembling Earth, a new hope for the ship. However, six million years have passed, and the eerie truth creeps slowly as the scene turns to black. But are there any people alive on the ship to populate this planet? That's all for today, guys. Don't forget to check these two videos out for some sci-fi binging. See you next time.